Our reading today is from the book of Revelation, chapter 5, verse 1 to 14. And I read, Then I saw the right hand of him who sat on the throne, a scroll with writing on both sides, and sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming in a loud voice, Who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll? But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth could open the scroll or even look inside it. I wept and wept because no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll or look inside. Then one of the elders said to me, do not weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. Then I saw a lamb, looking as if it had been slain, standing at the center of the throne, encircled by the four living creatures and the elders. The lamb had seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of, the, of God sent out into all the earth. He went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who sat on the throne. And when he had taken it, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb. Each one had a harp, and they were holding golden balls full of incense, which are the prayers of God's people. And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and open to you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, because you are you were slain with and with your blood. You purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be kingdom and priests to serve our God and they will reign on the earth. Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels numbering thousands upon thousands and 10,000 times 10,000. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. In a loud voice they were saying, Worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth, under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them saying, to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb to praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. The four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell and worshipped. And that is the word of the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm so happy to stand before your presence this, uh, this morning. It's true. Um, it's my first time to, to do a sermon on a, on, a, on a combined service like this. And I thank the Lord. And the sermon that I've been given, it's from one of the books that most people fear reading it. And that is the book of Revelation, chapter 5. I'm uh, discussing the whole chapter. And uh, we, are, we have things inside that, that are a bit scary because, you know, the Bible is talking about seven horns on the head of someone that John saw in the Bible. If you read chapter 4, it's talking about the seven eyes of the Lord, and you're like a description and how the Bible has described that John saw the person who was sitting on the seat of a throne. You get so scared, like you don't want to see him. Which kind of a creature is that? And so, um, and again, uh, from this uh, portion of scripture, you realize that the Bible is talking about the end of salvation. And at this particular time that John, uh, the writer of the book of uh, Revelation is John, who was among the disciple of Jesus. And so uh, um, the Bible says that John, when he was about to die, he was killed. When he was about to die, the Bible says that he had a vision. He saw a vision of the end of the world. And uh, this is not just from John alone. Quite a number of people in the scripture that we read, when they are just about to die, 
they usually see where they're going. You read in the Bible uh, during the death of Stephen, the Bible says that when Stephen was being stoned, when he was just about to die in, in, in pain, the Bible says that Stephen said in a loud voice that I see the heaven is open and the Son of Man is sitting at the right hand of God. And so this is similar to that. And this is a time that, that, that John the Baptist was about to die. And when he was about to die, physically he was John, but deep, deep in his, in his, in his spirit, he was seeing what God was trying to show him. This is what is going to happen. And uh, there will be a time that the salvation, the privilege, the grace that you have at such a time as this, it will be no more. It will be no more. And we see, even when uh, uh, Jackie was reading through all the text, we see that verse number two, the Bible says, and I saw a mighty angel proclaiming in a loud voice, who is worthy to break the seals and to open the scroll? But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth could open the scroll or even look inside it. Um, and verse, verse 1 there, the Bible says that John, he saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll with writing on both hands and sealed with seven seals. And so... Um, uh, John, the, John the, the disciple, the Bible says, if you read in verse 4, that he was walking and, and then he saw an angel coming towards him. And when the angel was coming towards him, John got scared because while, while, while they were walking in a, in a distance, he saw a light, a very bright light ahead of him. And when he continued to move closer to where the light was, the Bible says that he couldn't move because of a brightness uh, that was coming from where John, the, John was walking. Was walking, yes. And then he couldn't walk because of uh, the brightness and because of the anointing of God because he was actually in heaven. And so he fell down. When he fell down, he hid his face from looking directly where the sun was, uh, where the, the, the brightness was coming from. And then there's an angel who came, and then he said, come. So he rose up, and then he started walking with the angel. And so when he was walking with an angel, he saw a scroll. He saw someone. You know, he didn't see exactly. You know, the Bible says, if you read the entire of us, uh, chapter 5, there's no place where John tells us that he saw God. He just tells us that um, um, the one who sat on a throne, who sat on the throne, a scroll with writing. Like he saw there is someone over there, there is a lot of brightness, but there must be someone there. And then he saw a scroll. And this particular scroll, the Bible says that it had seven seals. And so um, we ask ourselves, what, what is this scroll that, that John saw? What is this scroll? And, and if you read in the Old Testament books, for example, in the book of Daniel, chapter 7, verse 9 to 11 there, there's also a story that Daniel is talking about, the scroll, that he saw a scroll. And this scroll... In the book of, in the, in the Old Testament times, there is no one that is, was able even to see it or to read. And so, this scroll is a book of judgment. It's a book of judgment. That's why I began by saying, this at times, or where John was, there was nothing like salvation. So if there, is, if there is nothing like salvation, there is no sinners there. There's no sinners prayer there. 
Oh, Father, I'm sinful. Please forgive me so that I can enter. There is no. Time is up. And so the only thing that is there is the, someone who is sitting on the throne and the scroll that is, that, that is there with seven seals. And some of you, maybe you've worked in, in, in government offices. You know how the seal is very important. Like the seal represents authority. You know, when you've been given a letter from, from, from State House and this letter doesn't have a seal, maybe it's, it's a fake. But if, it, it, if it, it bears the seal of the President of the Republic of Kenya and you've been invited, you'll go there with a lot of boldness. You've been asked, where are you going? You will produce your letter and whenever they see the seal of the President, you'll be allowed to come in. And so the scroll had the seven seals. Now, The scroll is God's plan of redemption, his plan finally to right all wrongs, to implement justice, to administer mercy to his, to his own, to create a people for his own possession. Now, why is the opening so important? And why is John crying? Because the Bible says in verse 4, I wept and wept because no one who was found, no one was found worthy, was, no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll or look inside. So John here is crying, no one is worthy. Even him is not worthy. And the reason why he's crying is because of his own sinful nature. No one is worthy to open. No one is worthy to look unto this book, the scroll. Now, verse number five, the Bible says, Then one of the elders said to me, Do you know, we have our elders in church, and in heaven, the elders are the ones who lead worship. By the way, if you do not, come Jajua, the elders. You know, the Bible says that God has been surrounded by 24 elders in his throne. The 24 elders. And so they're the ones who lead worship. I don't know why 24, but you know, God is very partial, by the way. God doesn't work with just anyone. He's very partial. That's why maybe the Bible we are told is 24. Um, and, so, and so one of the elders... Elders Mkonakazi Mzuri, one of the elders said to me, to John, do not weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and eat seven seals. So one of their jobs, the elders' jobs in heaven, is to comfort people, maybe is to welcome people into the heavens. And when people are so scared, because of a description in heaven, we will not stand, do you know? We will not be able to stand. And so one of the elder comes and tell, uh, tell John, do not weep. The lion of a tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and eat seven, seven seals. Verse 6. Then I saw a lamb looking as if it has been slain, standing at the center of a throne and cycled by the four living creatures and the elders. The lamb has seven horns and seven eyes, which are the spirit of God sent out into all earth. Now, verse 5 and verse 6, we get here, we discover something here, a paradox. The Bible is describing the person who is worthy to open that scroll as the lion and then as a lamb. Two opposite description of this person who is worthy to open the scroll, the lion and the lamb. And you know, in our daily life, unajua too, when the lion is here and the lamb is here, the lion will eat the lamb. And so the Bible is describing 
the person that is worthy to open this scroll as both the lion and the lamb. And why is it that the Bible is describing this person? Because John hasn't told us yet the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, that is able to open the, the, the scroll and its seven seals. And at the same time, he is seeing a lamb and this lamb is looking as if it had been slain. It has been slain, standing at the center of the, of the throne and cycled by the four living creatures and the elders. The lamb had seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into the earth. Well, the reason why the Bible is, 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 is calling or is, yeah, it's calling the person who is worthy to do all this work, the lion of a tribe of Judah, it is because I have already told you that this is the final day. There are no salvation beyond that level, beyond where John has reached. And the Bible describes Jesus as the lion of Judah because Jesus is not going just to show up as any man, anyhow, Jesus is going to show up as a king. A description of lion, even in our daily life, we've been taught in schools, the lion is a king of a jungle. He's a king of all the animals in the wild, in the, in the, in the wild animal uh, setup. And so the Bible calls Jesus as a king because he's not going to show up as a normal human being. He's going to show up with his scepter to judge. He's not going to show up. Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe we are thinking he's going to show up. We've already described him throughout the scripture as a merciful God. At that particular time, we will not see the mercifulness of Christ. We will see his face in a judgmental robe, in a, in a manner that you are not going to, to, to plead for, for forgiveness and then he forgives you at that particular time. So he's going to show up because I've already told you the lion kills the lamb. He's going to show up ready to kill and to ask people who are supposed to go to heaven and the people who are supposed to go to hell, you go there at that point where John is seeing him and describing him as a, as a lion of a tribe of Judah. The root of David. The reason why we have a root of David, it's because you read the genealogy of Jesus in the book of Matthew chapter 1. The Bible says that Jesus is from the, 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 the family tree of Jesse, from the family tree of David. And so he's going to show up as a king. Salvation is over. And some of the things that, 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 that I also learned from this particular portion of scripture, John is weeping and crying because he's even maybe thinking about the people who haven't seen this kind of a face of this person, of this, this, this Jesus. Go unto them. Look at the generation even right now that we live in. People who are claiming to, to, to be born again. People who say that they are Christians. But that is not what they are doing. And so John is crying and weeping. No one is going to be found worthy to open this book. And then the person now who is worthy to open this book is not the one that we've been having that description. That Jesus full of mercy is going to show up as a lion. He's not going to have had more discussion about salvation at that point of life. And so John is weeping. And then he gets a comfort from one of the elders who tells him, do not weep, do not cry. There is a lion. There is a lion of a tribe of Judah. At the same time, verse 6, now the Bible says, a lamb 
looking as if it had been slain. Now, sin requires judgment. And God told Adam, God told Adam, or God had a plan even in the Garden of Eden that he will die one day. He will die and redeem humankind from all this evil that is happening. And so, that automatically meant that God was coming to deal with sin once and for all. And by the way, today is our final series about the cross. And so, and so God already had that plan, even in the Garden of Eden in the book of Genesis. The Bible says that God had a plan. And he has been working very hard to make sure that this plan is accomplished. And himself is coming to, to save humankind. He's coming to judge every sin. And so every sin is subject to that, to, to the death sentence. So justice must be done. But God provides a substitute. God provides a lamb on whom... He can put the sin of those he serves. So God exercises justice, seeing that every sin is punished, and God exercises mercy, forgiving those who believe by putting their sins on the Lamb. And all of you know that Lamb, you were in a changer. And at times I was told, I've only been a slaughterhouse for... Uh, uh, beef. So I was told that sometimes when, 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 when you kill a sheep, it doesn't, it doesn't sense that you're going to kill it. But cows sense. That's what, that was what I was told. But sheep don't sense. So if, if you're taking it to a slaughterhouse, you want to kill it and, and make a, a, a very yummy uh, uh, meal, it just goes. Aukieka kisu apa because it doesn't, it's so innocent. In a, uh, this is the owner. This is the person who usually take care of me. So I, I don't think if this person is going to kill me. And so, two description of Jesus here. The lion and the lamb. And I've told you the reason why the Bible describes him as the lion. And what about the lamb? Because, you know, the Bible said that Jesus was so humble to a point of his death on the cross. That he went there. That a point in his life, the Bible says that he was crying and weeping in, in, in the garden of Gethsemane. And the Bible says he told God, please, would you remove this cup from me? Because my spirit is willing, but my flesh is weak. Because Jesus knows that he's going to die. And he's not going to die for any sin that he has committed. He's going to die for the sins of all humanity. And so Jesus' heart is so heavy at that particular point when he's, he's praying in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he's telling God, would you remove this cup? And then he said, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Because the, the, there is something that I have to do. The time is up for doing miracles and all doing that. The only work that is remaining is the work of a cross. And so I have to be so humble to be killed. Do you know, let me tell you something. If Jesus wanted not to be killed, Akuna mtu angamfanya anything. Akuna, he is God. The, there was a time that they wanted to kill Jesus. They wanted to throw him from a cliff. And the Bible says that our Jew village, Jesus Alienda, and they brought him, people came and they brought him up to the cliff. They wanted to, to throw him down. And the Bible says that Jesus evaporated. Even when I lewa evaporated from their hands and they were like where is Jesus? They looked at him, they couldn't see him. And the Bible says when they arrested Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane these are just some of the proofs that if Jesus never wanted to be crucified they couldn't. The Bible says when they came to arrest Jesus Peter came 
and he snatched one of the, the swords from the people who came to arrest Jesus. And Peter chopped off one ear of one of the soldiers. And do you know, if you, you, you personalize reading that portion of scripture, you realize Peter never wanted to chop off the ear. He wanted to chop off the head. But because maybe Ali Dodge and then the, 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 the sword got the ear off. And then the Bible says that Jesus told Peter, no, 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 return where you've gotten the sword. And the Bible says Jesus picked up the, the, the ear and then he returned. And there is something so profound in that particular portion of the scripture. The Bible says that Jesus told Peter, do you know that I can ask my father in heaven and my father in heaven will send legions of angels to deliver me for this. And so Jesus humbled himself like a lamb, like a sheep, because that was what was supposed to happen for him to redeem humankind and his love was so big to every flesh, to every soul, and he decided to die. And he decided to die willingly. And so the scripture here, the scripture here, verse 7, the Bible says, uh, He went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who sat on the throne. Up to this point, John is even afraid to tell us that the person who was sitting on the throne was God. Because of his anointing and because of uh, the, 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 the brightness that comes from that particular place. And so the, John is still describing God here that the one he took, he went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who sat on the throne. And when he had taken it, the four living creatures and the 24 elders, elders, elders mnajiskia, and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb. Each one had a sharp, had a harp, and they were holding golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of God's people. Let me repeat verse 8. And when he had taken it, the four living creatures, the four living creatures here represent all the living creatures, all the, anything that has breath. You know the Bible says that in the book of Psalms, everything that has breath, praise the Lord. And so the living, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb. Each one had a harp and they were holding golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of God's people. Let me read it up to verse 10. And they sang a new song saying, you are worthy to take the scroll and open its seals because you were slain. And with your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe and every language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests over, over, and priests to serve our God, and they will reign on earth. Praise the Lord. Now, we quickly realize that Jesus, the lamp, and the lion is Jesus. Because when John saw that the person has stood and he has the scroll on his hands, the 24 elders came and they bowed down. And they started worshipping him. They started speaking all these good words that he is worthy to take up the scroll. Is worth it to take up uh, uh, this kind of a book and to open its seals and, and glory and honor belongs to him. That he is God. And at times as human beings we do not recognize Christ up to this level. Like the way John here, he has now seen the full, the full version of Christ. The lamb and, and, and the lion. And after that recognition, he didn't want more explanation about the same. The Bible says that he realizes that and now he sees the lamb. You know, the Bible says that the lamb 
looked as if it has been slain. And then he remembered, this is the one who died for my sin. And so the one who died for my sin, the one who came and picked me up from the miry clay, Kumbe, this is the only person that is able to open up this scroll. Then worthy is his name. Worthy is his name. Woe unto the people that haven't received this kind of a king, this kind of a lamb. We're going back to the weeping. Woe unto that kind of a generation that when, when, especially in this country, when Christianity is being mocked at times, when we're being told things by the people who are leading us, and then we do those things foolishly without reading the scripture, without wanting to find out what God is saying. What is God saying? The likes of, of Mr. Mackenzie. What, what is it that God is telling us about fasting? Is God for forcing us to pray until, until we die? There's only one person in the whole Bible. The Bible said that he walked with God until he was no more. The book of uh, Genesis, uh, uh, his name is uh, Enoch. He walked with God. We don't know if he was fasting. The Bible says Enoch walked with God until he was no more. He didn't die. He didn't, people didn't see him like Elijah going up to the heavens, but he was just evaporated. <laughs> and so when we are being told something, do we, like the Bereans, go home and search the scripture and, and ask ourselves, we have been told about this. What is God telling us? What is the scripture telling us? Is God worthy to be worshipped? Yes. Is God worthy to be bowed down? Look, the 24 elders, the young people in the house, if the elders are worshipping God, you know the Bible says yeah, they fall down. Are your hands too heavy even to lift up before the Lord when you're worshipping God? Utawezana na heaven kweli, my friend. They, they don't say that they, they kneel down. The Bible says that they fall down. You read the scripture of, of, of uh, you read the, the, the Bible in the book of Revelation, and the Bible says that they have golden crowns in their hands, and they remove those crowns, and they throw them down, and they fall down and worship him. The 24 elders. It comes to a point that I want to pose a question. Have you recognized who God is in your life? Because if you have recognized him, and then so... Sorry, sorry about that. You have recognized him to that point that you know who God is. Eh? As you won't joke. You will weep. One you will weep. But the weeping is very good. You will weep because you are not worthy, because you are, so, you are sinful. All of us we are. And then number two, after God has revealed himself to you and you've read his scripture and you've recognized who he is in your life, the next thing that you will do, you will worship him. Worthy is the lamb that was slain. No one is able to take this scroll no one has ever, has ever, has ever come to my re refuge to rescue me. I will worship him because he is God. Then I looked, verse 11, and heard the voice of many angels. And I want to emphasize there. Because there are some people who have told us that in heaven, heaven is full. But the way there are some people who say that heaven is full, it has got only 144,000 people. That's what we are told. I don't want to mention uh, that particular denomination. Some of you know it. Listen here what the Bible says. Eh? Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels, numbering thousands upon thousands and ten thousands times ten thousands. Other versions says millions. 
Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels numbering thousands and thousands and ten thousands times ten thousands. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. In a loud voice they sing saying, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power, wealth, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and praise. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them saying to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise, honor, glory, and power. So you come to that recognition this, this afternoon of who God is, of a, of a paradox, of the things that he came to do. He never deserved to do that. Imagine all of us were supposed to die like that, the kind of a death that he died. And some even worse than that. We are told of the stories of the, the, the 12 disciples, how they died. They died at terrible, they died terrible deaths. And so all of us deserve to die that. And deserve even right now actually because we are still living in sin. But he came and he took that place instead of us. Nilene, if you want to do something and then you know that what you are about to do is, is, so tem is so hard for you to do. And then Someone else from nowhere that you don't know them, that you haven't asked them to help you do that, they just come and tell you, let me do this for you. You'll be so shocked. You will want to, you will want to, to know more about this kind of a person. And this is exactly what John did here. After realizing, Kumbe, this, this is Christ, the lamb, the, the lion, the king. You know, at times, my first time uh, to travel to Mombasa, I went to Mombasa alone. And I went there after I finished Form 4. In, in fact, I had just finished my exams, and then a week, uh, I was attending a KSEF camp in Kilifi. And it was my very first time. I've never been to Mombasa. I've never been to Kilifi. And I was, I was traveling at night. There was no SGR. And so I called people, the phone that I had, at I was in the knee, at in to me a pin, it couldn't do all those things. And I'm traveling at night, and I'm alone. I'm making a lot of phone calls. So, Nashukia Mombasa, Alafu, you from Nairobi, I took a bus to Mombasa. I was supposed to alight and then take another bus to Kilifi. And it's my first time. And I'm just barely teenage. Somehow, teenager, yeah, teenager in Kimalizia. And then, nikachukua basi from Nairobi. Nikamwambia, uyo mse, I'm going to Mombasa. I've never been to there. This is my first time. And so, I would want you to help me figure out. Tukisha fika, you help me. In your stage. In your stage. Eh, yeah, okay. Eh, gariza kilifi na chukulia wapi from here. And then he agreed. And then I was, you know, I wasn't traveling at night. I was traveling during the day, but the bus delayed. So the bus delayed up to around, uh, around uh, 3 p.m. Then I took a Nairobi. Tukayenda. Wakati nilifika coast, Mombasa. Tukakua harassed. We get out of the bus. And it was around... <laughs> Around 12 midnight, Uko. I said, okay, but I'm still a child, please. I can't go out. I don't know where to go. Allow me to just stay in the bus or even sleep here. And then when it's done, I can be able to go. Because when it's done, even if they're refusing to show you the way, at least you can go to a police station and ask. I do that several times. I've ever done that, by the way. I went to a police station and said, Mini mepotea, and I'm going this place. Siju ni wapi? And so, those guys told us, 
out of the bus. The bus is supposed to be cleaned and get ready. It's going back to Nairobi. And then I got out and I was like, Sasa, what am I going to gonna do here? I don't know anyone in Mombasa. I'm still children. <laughs> I am, I am, st I, like, at idea, seek one ID. And so, Nikashuka, na Nikenda, Nikenda kwa the street boys. I tensed, but I knew that the only people that can help me. So I went there and I asked them, Saseni Poa, I'm going to Kilifi. Uh, where can I get mats to take me there? And then they told me, brother, 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 skia, uku ni kubaya. Uku ni kubaya. Wewe umetoka Nairobi? Nimetoka Nairobi. So, they told me, sit here with us up to 6 a.m. and we will take you to where the bus are and you will comfortably go there. In fact, they told me they know some of the people who operate the, the, the matatus there. And so I agreed. So I sat there. They were chewing mira. They were drinking. I sat there and I was just interceding deep in my heart. I'm praying for them and also praying for myself. God, please preserve me. <laughs> I don't know where I am. <laughs> and so in the morning, to cut the long story short, in the morning when I was going, when, when, when six came, two of the boys took me back up stage. And uh, they, they, I can't remember that. In fact, up to now, it's my favorite bus, Tahmid Coaches. And I bought it, Tahmid. And they, told the, the, they knew the driver, the people who operated that kind of a bus. I should be given the first class seat. And so I sat there. And when I sat there, I didn't take their number. That kind of a memory came to me. Which kinds of people are these? Ah, Chokora? No. These people were chewing Mira. These people were doing drugs. They helped me. They didn't drop, and I had money. They didn't drop. Ah, which kinds of people are these? I started praying for them. I, I told God, please, would you bless these people? And I regretted why I didn't take their number their phone numbers, because we could be checking up on each other. And so this is somehow just a glimpse of what, Paul, what, what, what John saw in heaven. He came to realize that this, the person that is worthy, he died for his sins, he has been taking care of him, and now this particular person, he's showing up as a king of Israel and is ready to judge the world, and he's ready to take his position as a king, but he is the same king that redeemed him. And so John worshipped the Lord, and so John gave, gave God thanks and gave him glory. Together with the 24 elders and the four living creatures, they worshipped the Lord. And so I want to ask all of us, if you're finding time in worshiping, if you're finding hard time in just laying your life barely before the Lord, is it that you haven't known who God is? Is it that you haven't known that he is again coming as a king of Israel, as a king of the entire world to judge all of us? Do you know that at times right now we are enjoying grace we're enjoying salvation, that there will be a time that there will be no more salvation, there will be no more grace, that the time that you have it is now to receive him in our hearts, a time that you have to worship him, to start practicing how we're going to be worshiping him in the heavens, it's now. We have already been given a clue. Will you want to go to heaven and then it's a surprise to you? Eh, hey, I've never lifted my hands in worship while on earth. I've never pro prostrated barely on ground, just worshiping this kind of a God. And then the elders are the ones who are leading this. So Ukiona Mze Ameanguka Amelala and is worshiping God. If you're a young person, would you stand? you will not. 
Because you'll be asked, come on, an elder is doing this. What about me? And you will want to do that exactly. So at this particular time that I'm calling out the, calling the worship team to come, I want you to, to, to have some time with the Lord. And I want you to, to, to have that mentality that he's the lamb because he was slain because of my sins. And he is a king. And the king is soon coming, by the way. He's soon coming. All these things that you are seeing happening in Kenya, people imposing themselves to be Christ, it is scriptural. But then even I don't condemn them. I don't even talk about bad about them. I just say, okay. Have you, you've read the scripture? Yes. Sour. Me, I know Jesus is coming. And he's coming with a sword in his hands to judge. But the people who are born again, we will not be afraid to meet him. We'll be gladly want to receive him. We'll be gladly want to live with him forever and ever. And God has given us that opportunity. God has given us that privilege. Like these times that we've gathered here together, all of us, we just worship him. We just give him praises. We just recognize him. You know, in heaven, Vitu Azina expired it. You read the book of Revelation, you realize the Bible says that these people in heaven, they call God holy, 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 holy is a lamb. And they repeat it several times. And us, sometimes we get even tired when you're worshiping him, when you're giving him our thanks and glory. Praise the Lord.